Hey guys, Zookeeper Liz here, and today we're gonna to learn all about our beautiful wombat. Her name is Millie, and she's a girl. <laughs> uh, she is about six years of age, and she's not as big as a wombat can get. They can get very heavy. So I did mention before that koalas were closely related to wombats. And if you were to look at a koala and a wombat up close, they have some very similar features. And Millie has a really big head, so large that it's quite large in comparison to the size of the rest of her body. But she has a cartilage plate in her rump. And if you were to feel a wombat's bottom, it feels like concrete. It's really quite hard and they use this for defense. In her rear end, she actually has a cartilage plate. So on her bottom here, I know, it's all right. She actually has a cartilage plate and this cartilage plate she uses for defense. So if she was running head first into her burrow uh, and there was another wombat chasing her or anything chasing her down that burrow, they're just gonna hit a really hard bottom. They're not gonna be able to get any meat out of her. They might take a few tufts of fur out on their way, but they're really not going to be doing any damage to her. They are very territorial. So they like to keep their territories all to their own. And I'm not sure if you guys know this, but when a wombat poops, and it can actually take them nearly 18 days to digest their food. So this, this sweet potato we're not gonna be seeing for nearly two weeks. Uh, so when they've digested that food, comes out the other end as poo, but it's actually square, it's cube in shape. So this means she can mark the entrance to her burrow and they can have a lot of different burrows. They don't just have one, they can have many of them and they can be really quite long as well. Uh, and she might even have a few around her grazing areas so that she can go into them in the middle of the day if she needs to escape anything or the heat, if it gets too hot for her. But most of the time, you're not gonna see a wombat out in the middle of the day. They're going to be out at night. They are primarily not nocturnal animals. You can see her very impressive claws there on her front feet and she uses these to help her dig these very impressive burrows. Uh, so she can dig down quite deep underground. It's nice and cool down there as well. They don't really adjust to temperatures above 26 degrees Celsius. Uh, they like it to be cooler than that. So if it is really hot, they're going to dig down underground to keep themselves nice and cool. Now, Millie is a marsupial. So koalas, wombats, kangaroos, they're all marsupials. They all have a pouch, but Millie actually has a backwards facing pouch because she's gonna be digging lots of dirt all of the time. She doesn't wanna fill up her pouch with dirt because um, those little joeys will get covered in dirt. She wants to have that backwards facing pouch, much like a Tasmanian devil also has a backwards facing pouch as well. When a baby wombat is born, they are very, very tiny uh, and they will climb from the birth canal up into the pouch or by themselves and they're going to stay there for about five months. Uh, and then once they get too big, they'll start to come out and they're going to spend all of their time with mum. They're not gonna be on their own. They like to spend all of their time with their mum. So they don't leave her for nearly 18 months. Uh, they are fully weaned off mum's milk at about 12 to 15 months of age. And they like to eat as an adult, lots of different grasses, grass roots, and of course, sweet potato and carrot. That is a bit of a favorite for Millie. Uh, and they will also eat a diet of hay here at the zoo. So she eats a loosened hay and also a pellet diet as well. And we like to give her lots of different things like enrichment. So we'll sometimes use uh, special types of food such as corn and we'll put it in things like a box filled with lots and lots of leaf litter. And then she has to bury herself in the box. She does really enjoy playing with boxes. Uh, and then she will find the food and then eat it as well. They might look like they have good eyesight, but they don't really rely on their eyesight that much. She is very sensitive to sound, so she has really good hearing, an amazing sense of smell, very similar to the koala. So big nose, big ears, little eyes in comparison. Uh, they don't really need to be seeing too much. They're just going to be smelling and hearing. You can see when she, she stops when she hears the cockatoo. Their fur is quite coarse, not very soft. So if you pat a koala and a wombat, a koala is really soft and fluffy. A wombat's very coarse and hard of fur. It can repel the water, very similarly to that of a koala. Uh, but if there's really bad weather, a wombat's gonna prefer to be underground, out of the weather. <laughs> so this is a wombat poo. 
No, they don't have a square bottom. They have a square poo or a cubed poo uh, to mark out their territories. Uh, to let every other wombat know that this is the entrance to, the, to their burrow and no one else is allowed in. I was saying they're very territorial. They don't like to share those burrows with other wombats. All right, I think I'm gonna put this one down and go and wash my hands.